him and, and rolls into the kicker. So, um, you know, it was an aggressive penalty trying to make a play. So, you know, they fall into two different categories. Sometimes it's, it's awareness. It's, uh, you know, a, a poor decision in, in the moment, you know, trying to make a play. But they are, they are hustling. You know, they are, they are working hard. And so um, not that they're excusable or tolerable at all. You know, it's something we coach, coach hard against. Again, we went we went a streak where we had like four games. I think we didn't have any, and then you know this past game we've had you know we've had four in each game. So the, you know we can't continue that way. I know that's one thing that, that uh, Coach Patricia really stresses about it. I was you know part of how we measure our discipline, and so you know we just have to continue to point that out to the players, and you know uh, you know really teach them what to do to try to avoid the penalties. I was looking through the roster and. The I didn't get a chance to look when, last time you were with the Lions. Is it, is it more, do you think, these days? Is it harder? And every week it's a new guy that you're working in? You know, I think, you know, anytime you see any type of roster movement, uh, you know, not just in Detroit, but across the National Football League, you know, that's always going to affect special teams. You know, because the, you know, a, a front line player misses time. That means his backup is now getting more snaps on offense and defense, which means that player is probably going to have a reduced role and on special teams and then those roles fall to you know someone that's typically inexperienced or it gets divided up and so you know typically you see things happen uh, at the beginning of the season and then towards at the, at the end of the season and you at the beginning of the season it's because you have uh, you have new players out there you know you have rookies you have young players that aren't yet accustomed to the speed of the game uh, then things settle down, and then uh, towards the end of the season, when you know injuries start to mount up and that sort of thing, you get another influx of young players, and so you kind of you start to see things happen again uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, you know that's just it's a you know you look at you know just kind of to expound on your question. I mean that's that's a dynamic that, that pretty much happens year in and year out. Um, you know, I don't really, you know, I don't put much uh, thought or waste a lot of energy in who I have. I just try to pre prepare the guys that we do have the best that we can. Um, you know, I'm, I like this group. I really do. Uh, we haven't, you know, we haven't played nearly consistently enough. Uh, you know, the past two weeks haven't, uh, haven't been great, but, you know, um, you know, they're, they're invested, you know, they work really hard, they care. You know, you can, you can tell when you're on the sideline, you got guys huddled up and you're getting ready to send them out of the field, you know, uh, what it means to them. You know, and I've seen that look before where it's the other way, where it's kind of like, let's just get through, the, let's get through the season. And I haven't seen that at all, not even close with this group. They're, you know, they're competing to make tackles. They want to be the guys, you know, uh, we, you know, we keep track of that stuff and, and we have a, you know, keep a competition going within the team and, you know, they're they're competing out there to try to make plays. And so, you know, uh, I'm I'm still have a lot of a uh, lot of reasons to be encouraged about this group. You have a lot of relationships with your players uh, from Central before and they're having <laughs> yeah. Is, is enjoying that to some yeah, degree? Yeah, to some degree as much as I can. You know, it's hard to, to we're pretty busy here. It's hard to pay too much attention to it. But I guess it's a little bit bittersweet. But, you know, you, um, you know, we had, a, we had a really young team a year ago and a lot of those kids are who played last year as freshmen and sophomores are, are have matured and grown up and learned from the experiences that they had a year ago. And, uh, you know, Jim McElwain and his staff have done a fantastic job and, uh, you know, got to give them credit. But, uh, you know, I think that, you know, you could make a case that, you know, I guess what I'm proud of is they didn't, they didn't turn take over a, a situation where the cupboard was bare. There was, you know, there's a lot of good uh, talent on that team, a lot of homegrown Michigan talent on that team and so yeah I, I do take a great deal of pride in that. Through three quarters of the season, you know, looking at where your team's at, how close are you to, to having that group where you want to Um, you know, again it's kind of a it's a it's a weekend 
day in day out process you know you've got you got young players uh, you know you have players that are moving on and off the roster onto the active or practice squad onto the active roster so uh, you know we took a couple hits you know we lost Agnew for a couple games uh, you know uh, Nick Bodden losing Nick was you know that, that hurt us a little bit because Nick was really starting to come on and and uh, you know, was a four-core pl player for us. So then, you know, up comes Isaac Nada, and he's got to kind of take up the slack. And, you know, so he's played in two two NFL games now. And, you know, that's just, you know, that's just the way uh, business is done. Again, you, you know, we do the best we can to, to prepare our players week in and week, week out. Um, but you can't manufacture the game experience. And, you know, I think more guys, more the more guys play, the more they play with one another, the better they, they get. What's the biggest thing you want to see from them in this last quarter? Uh, I want us to see, get us back to being a consistently, uh, you know, dependable and dominant kickoff coverage team. I think we started off the year really well in that respect. And then, you know, we've taken a step backward the last two weeks for, you know, a variety of different reasons. But, uh, you know, we got to get back to covering kicks at a high level. We, and again, we were doing... Uh, we were doing a really good job of that throughout the, uh, you know, first, you know, really up until the last two games. And so, uh, you want know, to con see it, continue to see us do a good job in our punt protection and coverage. And I'd like to see, you know, more production out of the return game, punt return and kickoff return. Kickoff return, we don't seem to get a whole lot of opportunities. But uh, the punt return game is something that, uh, you know, we've been really, really close Uh you know, things just have to kind of fall in line for us, and and uh, you know we're due to break one or two out. How do you how do you like bounce back from like a, the Sims return in Washington was kind of like a weird play? Yeah, line yeah, you know that. Yeah, I think you're always teaching. You know, you're always teaching the players. I mean, you're right. That one was very different, and that you know you're not going to study that play after the season and say we want to put in this return. You know, it's a it's an interesting dynamic when the anytime the ball's on the ground, football players are instinctive. It's like, you know, it's like throwing a stake in a dog pen and all the dogs run after it and then you just close the gate in behind it. I mean, it really, you know, they see the ball on the ground and they all run that direction. And, you know, if it's if it's bouncing towards the way the block are le blocks are leveraged, you're gonna make a you're gonna make a big play. If uh, if it's bouncing away from the leverage of the blocks like it was in Washington and you get on the wrong side of those blocks and that returner who's a highly skilled player has the opportunity to you know recover the ball quickly then there's going to be a there's going to be a gap or two in your coverage and and uh, you know we just didn't get the overlap that we needed so it's a different you know different dynamic and uh, again you know it's it's perpetual it's not you know, just like any area, offense or defense, you know, the kicking game, it's, you're always coaching. You're, you know, there's, you know, it's, it's never quite good enough. It only takes one or two players not, you know, not in the right position. That's the difference between, you know, a tackle inside the 20 or the ball getting to the 30 or, you know, or, or beyond. And so, um, you know, having them understand that, uh, teaching it it's a very difficult you know the best practice for kickoff coverage really comes in game there's no way that we can simulate in practice the speed and the uh really the violence that takes place on that play we wouldn't have anybody left to play the game on sunday and so uh when you have a core group of players that you know play with one another for a period of time that's really when you have your best results when you start changing pieces you become a little bit vulnerable and it's a matter of you know trying to get those new pieces to you know come up to speed as quickly as possible